Well, we just found out about this latest technology in the single choice test area, but not in time for Monday's quiz, so I guess we'll have to stick with what we got for now. I think a lot of the confusion about microarray technology stems from not understanding how a microarray is constructed or planned. So I want to just go through where we get the information that we put uh, onto the microarray, so maybe that will make it easier to understand what kind of information we can get from one. So here's a human chromosome, remember 180 million base pairs or so, but I just want to focus in on three regions uh, whose sequence we know and wh whose information we can map back to a chromosome. So here we've got three guys, a, a red region with its orange anti-parallel complement, a uh, blue region with its light blue anti-parallel complement, and then this green and light green pair over here. So they map to different parts of a human chromosome, but since we know the entire sequence of the human genome, we can always take this, uh, the information that we get from any one of these sequences and map it back to the human chromosome. So for whatever reason I've become interested in these three areas, I decide that I'm going to have oligonucleotides synthesized with the information on the top strand here, the top strand here, and the top strand here. So I go and I have these oligonucleotides synthesized, and I get little buckets full of them, uh, all three of these guys, and I spot them, 10,000 molecules or whatever it takes, onto a tiny spot on a glass slide or, or a slide composed of whatever material will will bind the oligonucleotides permanently. So here's three of those spots on the red, blue, and green spots here, and they make up a tiny fraction of this much larger microarray. So I'm going to do this over and over again, but I got tired of drawing it. But each of the spots on this microarray then has a known oligonucleotide with a sequence that I can map back to a chromosome in the human genome. I'm now going to take a complex biological sample that is composed at least partly of anti-parallel complements, the orange and the green and the, uh, and the light blue guys here. Uh, it also has lots of other molecules in it. So say I've taken the RNA from an entire tissue and labeled it up. Some of the molecules are going to be complementary to those three spots that I put onto the microarray. Most of them will not but we're going to just soak them together and let them find each other and see if we can get the anti-parallel complements to anneal to one another. Now I'm going to wash away all of the things that didn't anneal and everybody who found their anti-parallel complementary partner like uh, the light green guy here is going to stick to the light green to the dark green spot on the microarray and I'm going to get hybridization so some of the uh, the, the RNA from the mixture that I made is going to stick to its specific spot and now we can go back to that spot and say well how did you do? How did you do it finding your anti-parallel complement? If you were able to locate that anti-parallel complement in that complex mixture then you will have some signal and I can measure how much signal you obtained. Then once I've done that I can say okay uh, Whatever that amount of signal is, I can now relate it back to that original spot on the, uh, on, the, on the chromosome and say, well, some of that information must have been transcribed, uh, and I can determine about how much. So let's say that there are two genes being transcribed from this chromosome. Uh, one of them up here with the blue probe, and one of them over here with the green probe, if I go back to my microarray and say, well, I was probing with RNA, uh, and it was able to become anti-parallel complementary to this blue box, and I got, say, two units of, uh, of signal from that one, uh, but with the, the light green uh, probe, I was able to pick up anti-parallel complements to the oligonucleotide that I put onto the array, and let's say that I got eight units of signal, then I'll know that I was transcribing this time, uh, this uh, transcript four times as much as I was transcribing that one. 
So that's the sort of information I can get from the microarray. And since I know where the oligonucleotides came from, when they pull out their anti-parallel complement, I can go back to the chromosome and say, okay, the gene that was transcribed in that region must have had this relationship, this relative relationship for how much uh, transcription was occurring in that region of the genome. So that's the sort of thing we can learn from a microarray.